Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to continue our series on the Dell PowerEdge R620 server. In this video, we're going to specifically focus on VMware ESXi 6.5. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R620 server. Do us a favor if you find anything in this video useful, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, well, let's get rolling. So uh, first off, we're going to go ahead and put up a, a quick chart that's going to just show you all the uh, different uh, compatible versions of uh, VMware ESXi. Um, so here are the uh, seven different options. Uh, we're also going to uh, go ahead and install uh, VMware 6.5 and show you step-by-step -step instructions. Hey guys, this has been with Cloud Ninjas and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to install VMware ESXi 6.5 onto your server. VMware ESXi is a very popular Type 1 hypervisor that is great for virtualization and creating virtual machines. The actual installation process is fairly easy, so I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that. In this video, we will specifically be installing VMware ESXi 6.5. But like I said, we're going to go ahead and create that account first. And once you create that account and go to the page in the description, you can find the license key right here. I recommend that you copy this license key somewhere or writing it down um, just so it's in a spot where you can easily access it for later in the video. So once you have that license key, go ahead and scroll down to where it says download packages. Then we want to find the VMware vSphere hypervisor 6.5.0 update 3 binaries. If you really wanted to, you could use the update 2 or this one right here. I'm only doing update 3 since it's the most up-to-date version. The download may take a little bit of time, so we're just going to go ahead and fast forward right here. So now we have the VMware ESXi file. Now what we want to do is go ahead and create a bootable USB drive with this file. So we're going to go ahead and show you how to do that. We're going to go ahead and install a program called Rufus. Um, this is the program that we're going to use to create that bootable USB drive. Um, so we want to start off by going to their website. So we just have it typed into Google right here, um, and then we'll click on that first result. Once on Rufus's website, we can scroll down to where it says download, and then we'll click on that first option. It may get an ad, so just feel free to close that, um, and then it'll download. And it downloads fairly quick, which is always nice. So now what we want to do is go ahead and run that file that we just installed, run the Rufus application. So once Rufus opens, we want to go ahead and click on select. And then we want to go ahead and pick the VMware file. Okay, once we have the VMware file in there, give it a second to load. And then what we can do now is we can just go down to the bottom and click on start. You may get a warning message. Basically what it's saying is that um, any data on the USB drive is going to be erased once you do that. Um, so you just wanna make sure that the USB drive, one, it's either has no data on it, or two, that the data that's on it, you don't mind wiping it. So if you're okay with that, you can just go ahead and click yes. And this will start the process. So we will just go ahead and wait this out. So we'll go ahead and fast forward. And once that finishes up, then we're gonna go ahead and move to our server. All right, so our bootable USB drive is now created, so we can go ahead and eject that from our, our computer, and we can go ahead and put it into our server. So once it's in the server, go ahead and boot that server up, and during post, you wanna go ahead and press F11, so we can get into the boot manager. So once you're in boot manager, you wanna go ahead and scroll down to UEFI boot menu. You wanna go ahead and click on that. And inside of this menu, there's going to be a collection of different devices we can boot from. So we want to scroll down and select the, the USB drive that we have our VMware ESXi ISO file on. Once you do that, this is going to start the actual VMware ESXi installation. This part may take a little bit of time to actually load into the installation. So we'll just go ahead and fast forward until we get to that point. So once the installation finally loads, we'll be prompted with a screen that's welcoming us to the installation. So we can just go ahead and press enter to continue. After that, we'll be prompted with the end user license agreement. Um, so go ahead and press F11 so we can accept that. And then we'll start scanning for available devices to actually put our installation onto. 
We're gonna be installing VMware onto a USB drive that we have plugged into our server. Um, you don't have to do this, uh, but we're just doing it for this video. Um, you can go ahead and just install it on a, a normal piece of storage, like a, hard, like a regular hard drive or solid state drive or whatever you wanna do. But like I said, for this video, we're gonna use a USB drive. So you just wanna click that destination. In a case like this, you may have some existing data. So if you don't want this data to be erased, go ahead and pick a different device. But in our case, we don't really care. Um, so if you don't mind moving forward, just press enter. Now we can just select a keyboard layout. So it's gonna be US default. And then here we can create a password. So this can be whatever you want it to be, um, as long as it's seven characters long and make sure you just pick something that you can remember but is secure. So we have finished everything that we need to fill out. So now we can actually start the actual VMware ESXi installation. So we just wanna go ahead and press F11 so we can start this installation. And now our VMware ESXi installation has finally started. So this may take a little bit of time, so go ahead, sit back, relax. We're gonna go ahead and fast forward when this installs and we'll be right back. All right, so the installation has finished. Once it finishes, you'll have this dialog box that pops up and says installation complete. You wanna go ahead and remove the installation media before you reboot the server. So that bootable USB drive that we created earlier, you just wanna remove that, press enter so we can reboot the server. So we're gonna go ahead and reboot the server and then we'll boot back up into VMware ESXi. So once the server reboots, go ahead and go back to boot manager. And inside Boot Manager, we're gonna go back to UEFI Boot Menu. And in this boot menu, you wanna scroll down to that USB drive that we installed VMware onto. And th this is going to boot us into the hypervisor. So as you can see, it says loading VMware. And we'll just give it a second while it boots up. So once VMware boots up, you'll be able to tell because there are two IP addresses displayed. One, we have an IPv4 address, and then we have an IPv6 address displayed. And these IP addresses are actually how we're going to access the VMware web interface. So we're gonna go ahead and show you how to do that right now. And then accessing this web interface is really where the heart of VMware ESXi is going to be. The actual operating system that we installed onto the server, there's not a whole lot you can do. Um, you can change some settings around, but on the server itself, there's really not much to do where all the features of VMware ESXi live is in that web interface, and that's how we're gonna be able to create virtual machines. So what you wanna do is go ahead and turn on a laptop or desktop that is connected to the same network as your server. You wanna go ahead and open up any web browser of your choice. And in the search bar, you wanna go ahead and enter in the IP address that we saw on that screen. We're gonna enter in the IPv4 address, and once we do that, you may get a, an error saying your connection isn't private, uh, but you can go ahead and just ignore that and continue. So in order to log in, the username is going to be root, and then the password is gonna be that password that you created during the VMware installation. So go ahead and click Login, and we have successfully logged in to the web interface. So from here, we can pretty much just start creating virtual machines and start doing whatever we wanna do with VMware. Um, but there's really one last step that I wanna go over and that's actually applying that license key that we saw earlier in the video. So in order to register that license key, what we wanna do is go to the left-hand side of the screen and click on Manage. And then you wanna to go to the Licensing tab. Inside of here, we can click Assign License, and then we can just go ahead and type in that license key or copy in that license key. From there, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Just go ahead and put that key in. Now our VMware license key has been applied, um, so we're all good to go. If you found anything in this video useful, go ahead and leave a like and smash that subscribe. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below. If you're interested in purchasing a custom built server, whether it's Dell, HP, Supermicro, go ahead and email us at sales at cloudninjas.com. That's sales at cloudninjas.com.